Hey, and welcome to another video. I haven't done a video uh, talking to you for quite a while. The, my recent videos have been mainly uh, behind the scenes at weddings. Uh, with that in mind, uh, something I've always wanted to do for a long time is put out a video of the kit that I use. Okay, since I first started doing my landscape photography, I have changed my setup a little bit. I had uh, Canon gear for a long time and, and if you've been on my channel for a while you'll you'll know that and I have done a little bit of a bit of a vlog on my Canon 6D that I had on a on a particular shoot. However there is a, a photographer that I follow on YouTube and been following for about a year now. His name is Jason Lanier. You might have seen some of my recent videos on a workshop I did with him in May and from that a few other videos that have been put out of me behind the scenes on that uh, on that workshop. Uh, I was in a video for Rotolite. I'm currently using the Rotolite Neo to light me a little bit from the side there so the light you can see just there. Uh, I'm looking to get the EOS which is the light that we used on that workshop and which is the video that I'm in on that workshop. So look out for that. I'll, I'll put a link just up there uh, to show you that video from Jason uh, and the video from Rotolite. Uh, so you can see it being used in action and uh, might help you make your mind up whether you want to buy something like that for your wedding photography. So before we get started, I just want to uh, show you my website, which you can see on screen just there. This website is my wedding photography website. I have a few, uh, obviously, for various different aspects of the photography I do. I've got a landscape one. Uh, but if you want to have a look at that website, I'll put a link up on the screen now for you and uh, leave a link down below so you can have a look. So also, before I start, I just want to uh, let you know that I am using Sony gear for my weddings. Now I've purchased quite a bit of kit over the last couple of months and I don't want this to be a video to gripe about any other manufacturer because I still use Canon. I use Canon quite a bit. I still use Canon for my landscapes. I use Canon for my vlogging and the camera that uh, I'm videoing on at the moment is the Canon 70D uh, with Canon glass on it. So I'm not averse to using Canon gear. Uh, I don't dislike Canon, I don't dislike Nikon or Nikon, depending on where you're from and how you say it. Uh, this is just me putting out there what I currently use for my weddings and giving you a bit of background as to why I use the gear that I use and the lenses that I use. So let's get into this. So the only thing I probably won't talk to you today about, it will be the lighting I take to weddings. It's quite extravagant, I've got bags and bags of stuff uh, which I will review at some point uh, because I don't just use the lighting for weddings, I use them for for uh, photo walks and other bits and pieces like that. So wait around for that and uh, I'm sure you'll see a video of that coming soon because uh, the lighting gear I have is quite extravagant and uh, I think you'll probably like it. So first of all, this is the Sony a7R2. Uh, I purchased this just before the May workshop with Jason and there and truthfully it has been amazing uh, since I stopped shooting with the Canon 6D and I had a Canon 7D, I still got them uh, 6D and a 7D and using this at weddings uh, my not only the picture quality is completely uh, blowing me away it's also allowing me to shoot for longer it's also allowing me to uh, get more images correct in camera. Okay, this can be a little bit tricky in post because I'm actually ending up with more images after my culling process uh, than I did with Canon, because Canon I would cull and uh, you know, you run and gun and you shoot, especially at weddings. And you can get a lot of images that are blurry, a bit of motion blur, maybe slightly out of focus. Uh, so you do cull and you get rid of a lot of images, but with this I shoot more, I get more images anyway, so my image count has gone up hugely uh, because I just enjoy so much shooting with it. Uh, and also the final image count is much higher, good for the client, 
Uh, tricky when you've got to actually come to process all those images. But if not, it's okay. So the glass I've got on this is the uh, Sony G Master 24 to 70. This is probably the lens that I keep on my camera the most uh, because it gives me that range from portrait at 70 down to uh, you know your wide sort of environmental shots at 24. So that's a perfect lens to stay on there for the majority. You know, that stays on there. I would probably say 70% of my wedding day. So let's leave that there a second. And that I purchased for a tenner. It stops me from dropping it. I don't like straps. I've tried hand grips, but they get in the way when you want to try and do stuff. Uh, so this little little lanyard, if you like, which uh, just goes over there. Perfect, don't drop. I'll put that there. Okay, so this is the FE 1.4 85 millimeter from G Master. Again, G Master lens. Not cheap, uh, but the results I found from this are immense. They are crazy sharp, even at 1.4, because with the A7R2, the eye autofocus on this is amazing, and I can get sharp images. People do complain that at 1.4, uh, your images aren't as sharp. You're probably better off going to 2, maybe 2.8, but sometimes you want that one eye in focus and the bokeh or the bokeh uh, you get from this lens is is just unbelievable it's smooth it's, it's gorgeous this lens is the fe 2.8 19 millimeter macro from g master again uh, this has saved my bacon so many times in recent weddings when i want to get close-ups and uh, detail shots, rings in particular. This lens has just uh, blown my mind when it comes to shooting those detail. Very important lens. Although it doesn't come out very often at a wedding and it's not particularly cheap, but worth the money, well worth the money. This uh, bad boy is the 2.8 70 to 200 G Master again. Unbelievable. I put this on uh, indoors and sit back, take candid shots from across the room and the pictures are so sharp and amazing afterwards. It's just crazy. At a recent wedding, the room I was in was huge and the way the tables were placed, I didn't want to go too close to the top table because they were doing the speeches at the time. So I sat back and used this single lens for about an hour and a half and completely away. It was just unbelievable. And some of the shots I got were just amazing. You know, walking around the back, you're not gonna interfere with anything that's going on. You're gonna get some really good candid shots, not only of the people talking, but of people laughing and stuff at the people talking, that kind of stuff. So that is amazing. I do have this little bad boy but I mainly put this on if I want to go really wide. Uh, this is the 10 to 18 from Sony. Uh, not a G Master lens, not an expensive lens, but if you want to get some really good environmental shots with that, bear in mind this is a crop lens designed for a crop sensor. So if you go full at 10 millimeter, you're going to get some vignette. You're not going to get complete black around the edges, but it is noticeable. Uh, but again, in post, you can get rid of that. It's not a problem at all. So I'll put that down there. So this is my wedding go-to setup. I do take my vlogging cam and my 70D that, that you're watching me on with me as well, because my assistant takes uh, video. You've seen some of my behind the scenes video at weddings, and that's what that's shot on. Uh, so this, setup at the moment. I don't have a second body. I'm used to shooting with a second body and it is a good idea, but they're quite expensive. I can't justify getting another body just yet. I'm probably going to go for the the A6500 for the video capabilities uh, and that camera is, is awesome. So I could have a second body that not only shoots great stills, although it is a crop sensor on that one, it will do really good video so I can get some more video of behind the scenes and that kind of hybrid shooting at weddings where you're doing video and pictures. This is the Manfrotto Pro Light, although it is the biggest version in their Pro Light range. 
which is absolutely huge. It's got the sections in there for all your bits and pieces. And I get all this stuff in that compartment. My vlogging stuff goes in the top so my assistant can get to it really quickly. And uh, yeah, loads of pockets for all different things, uh, your batteries and whatnot. So I will say that with, <coughs> put that down now, I will say that with this camera, you will want to get some spare batteries for it because the batteries don't last too long. Uh, for me, it's not a big problem. I always keep a spare battery in my pocket no matter where I'm going. As soon as I know we're down to 10% on the battery, swap it out. And I check that every time we get to a, a certain part of the day during the wedding. So I know when to change it out, it's not a big problem. And I have, I think six batteries and all. And I think even on my longest day, I've used three and a half, maybe four at most. Let me talk a little bit about when I use each particular lens at what part of the day. So I have told you that my 24 to 70 is on my camera, probably 70% of the day. That's because I get a good range from portrait shots uh, right through to environmental shots of you know the area and, and uh, where you are. Obviously, I've got the the wider if I need it to get larger buildings in if I if I can't go back too far. Uh, the 85 portrait lens, uh, amazing when I'm doing candid stuff and I'm walking around a room that's uh, you you quite close tight in. The 85 is on there and it'll stay on there. So probably before the speech when everyone sat down before the speeches when the speeches are going on I'll sit back with this bad boy and that doesn't come off my camera uh, all the time I'm running around the, the side of a room uh, if the room is big enough even if it's a small room to be fair you can get some really nice close-ups with this uh, obviously you've got the, the good 70 millimeter end where you can get a bit closer if you have to but at two, even at 200 millimeters this thing as a beast you can sit back and just relax knowing you're getting some really good images the 90 is for the detail shots that'll come out if i'm doing by prep uh, flowers rings shoes all that kind of stuff will be done with that so there you go that's my my setup for weddings i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you've got any comments please drop them down below if you've got any questions please ask always always happy to help uh, and answer questions where I can. If uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. You'll get future updates. I'm probably going to start a section on my YouTube of the gear, going into more detail, testing and stuff like that, of particular bits. So if you want me to to uh, review a certain lens or a certain function of the ca uh, of the camera, please uh, please just ask me in the comments and I'll do that for you. So yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. Please drop a like on the video. And pop over to my website if you want to. Uh, you'll see it in the background there. And uh, I'll put a link up for you. Okay, great. Thanks very much. And I'll see you in another video.